Hey everybody, I'm Alex Pearl, and welcome to Scratch and Sniff, the show about fragrance culture. Today's episode is going to be about trends versus personal style. So friends of mine see fragrances trending on social media and on platforms like YouTube and TikTok, and they ask me, hey, have you heard of this? Would you recommend this for me? And usually I'll answer that by asking them, so tell me, what do you like? And the response that I get is usually like this eye roll and this, uh, the, the sigh of like, oh, what does that even have to do with this? And the answer is everything. So regardless of what's considered relevant or trendy, I encourage everybody to develop their own personal sense of taste and style. And there are two main elements to that. Number one, finding out what notes and accords you personally like. And two, finding out which notes and accords actually work well for you. Those are two different things. They might sound kind of similar, but they are distinctly different. So allow me to explain. Both of these factors take a degree of experimentation to find out what is it that you really like and what is it that works well for you. You might kind of roll into the fragrance game with an idea of what it is that you're going to like, and that doesn't always work out. I had this idea when I was getting into collecting like, oh, I'm gonna collect a bunch of vintage fragrances. Maybe that'll be a thing that I really enjoy. And that kind of worked out, but what I found out was like a good half of what I would pick up, I, I didn't like that it just didn't agree with me. It was aldehydes. It's a note that I just personally don't care for. And when you have that deadly combination of aldehydes and benzoin, <laughs> yeah, no, that really doesn't work for me. Sorry. But then there are notes like civet. Uh, civet is something that I heard people talk about in a negative way. People saying that like it smells like a urinal or that it smells like you peed yourself. And I had this idea of what it would be like and I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to smell like a urinal. So I avoided civet heavy fragrances for a while until I, I realized, you know what, I actually I like this note. It is a little bit potent and powerful, but I like the energy that Civet has, and I, I just find it aesthetically pleasing. I really love the smell of Civet. I wouldn't have known that I either liked or disliked either one of those notes if it wasn't for experimentation, if I didn't give them a try. When it comes to what notes and accords work for you and which don't, that is different than what you like and what you don't like. I love the smell of aquatics, and I love fragrances that lean heavily on greenery, but I don't wear anything like that too often because it doesn't project much on me. What I found out is that I have pretty poor circulation. My hands feel cold most of the time. I don't really have a lot of body heat. So when I wear something that's very cool and aquatic or sort of like a, a green, freshy fougère, it does not project the way that I want it to. Even though when I get really, really close to my wrist and smell it, I still love the smell. Because of my body's chemistry, because of my, you know, kind of crap circulation, if I wear something that's, you know, that has the accord of warm and spicy, uh, something that's got a lot of clove in it, something like, um, like Spellbound or uh, um, Jungle Elephant by Kenzo, uh, those are, those are fantastic. Anything that is like clove and cardamom and cinnamon heavy. My skin loves that. I actually do project that really well. And again, warm and spicy was not an accord that I was originally drawn to. It was something that I had to find out that my skin really liked through experimentation. So try things that are a little bit left of where it is that your comfort zone happens to be. Because sometimes, sometimes you're gonna find something 
that you really love that you might not initially have thought would work so well for you. I strongly, strongly suggest that you develop your own sense of personal style and use that as a jumping off point instead of just trusting what's put in front of you by social media. So I recommend experimentation with uh, samples, with decants, until you get a better idea of the way that uh, individual notes and accords smell and how they behave on your skin. Because you could follow those trends, you could go out and buy whatever it is that's considered relevant right now, but you're gonna waste a lot of your hard-earned money on bottles of stuff that you might not even like. Trends are gonna come and go. You're going to see a multitude of them pass by in your lifetime, but having a solid sense of your own personal style, that makes you timeless. Speaking of timeless, I'm gonna rewind a little bit. Do you remember earlier when I said that uh, getting into fragrances, one of the first things I was drawn to was collecting vintage fragrances? So some of them did work really well for me. And those that I, I liked the most uh, tended to be from Guerlain. There are houses like this that have had fragrances in production for over 100 years. When you take a look at L'Air Bleu, uh, Mitsuko, when you try Shalimar, that, that is timeless. That might not be you know, trending right now, but they've stayed in production for a reason. They are classic, they are timeless, nobody can take that away from you, and the fact that they're not relevant, does it matter to Guerlain? No. Does it matter to me? Not at all. I'm going to enjoy that just as much. And maybe that'll catch the nose of somebody who is only interested in what's trendy and what's relevant, because this is something out of the ordinary. This is something unique to them. And then they might ask me, you know, hey, what is that that you've got on? And I'd be happy to share that with them. Expand their horizons a little bit. <laughs> okay, wait, 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 wait. Here is a thing, I have got to talk about this thing because it drives me up the wall. There is a certain type of hype that I hate. Ugh. This idea that, um, that certain fragrances can help you, like, get a man. That there's this promise of attraction. Ugh. There is an idea there that I don't like, and I'd, I'm gonna try to put words to it, so hear me out. Let's say that you were sold on a fragrance because somebody said that this is sexy, that it smells attractive and alluring, and this is going to help you get a man. Well, number one, you might want a man, but you do not need a man. So before you even begin looking for a dude, I suggest that you get good with you, okay? Let's start there. Two, let's say you do wear this, this hypothetical fragrance, and you don't really like it, but you do know that it's considered trendy and that it's super relevant right now. So you wear it out on a date, and this dude who you're on a date with, whoever he is, really likes it. Well, what is it that he really likes? Is it you or the trend? Be your authentic self. Because if you're wearing something that's considered trendy, if you're wearing the hottest new thing and you don't even like it and people pay you a compliment, that's going to feel empty. That's hollow. But if this person is on that hypothetical date with that dude, and that person is wearing something that they really love, and then dude says, oh, what is that? That smells great. You feel that. That's where the magic happens. When you are representing yourself authentically and other people respond to that, that feels wonderful. So, how's that for the first video, huh? Develop your own sense of personal taste and style around fragrances, do not let me catch you simply chasing trends and relevance. Stay true to you, whoever you may be, 
Have fun out there. I love you. Good night. It is hot in here. I actually got through that all in like one go. That was that was good. I felt good. My hair looks stupid, but like who cares? Do you care? I look a mess. I don't care. Did you have fun? I had fun. Who cares?